Welcome back to the Watch So Series podcast. Brandon is back with Devin and Mike. And we are back for our weekly show on This Week in the Nerd News, where we talk about uh, all different news stories and nerd them, some things that we've done, entertainment, games, movies, anything uh, of that ilk. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast app. Uh, be sure you leave us a five-star review. Uh, also, check out some of the movie reviews. Uh, Ray Shani from the Single Simulcast and I are back doing movie reviews. Uh, so we're going to be doing a lot more movies. We recently did Ocean's 8. We're doing Hotel Artemis tomorrow. Ooh, Ocean 8. So we will be back. So just check those out. Uh, and we also recently did uh, a Book of the Month Club on the Darth Vader series. So check those things out. Um, but today we're going to talk about a bunch of different things. We're going to have a section recapping E3. So we will get to that in a little bit. Uh, but before we get to that, um, Mike, did you do anything nerdy this week besides E3? We'll talk about that later, so don't talk about that now. Uh, not really. Not, not Aside from E3, no, not, nothing, honestly. You didn't watch anything? Didn't read anything? Oh, I mean, we, I finished Vader for our review, but if, you know... We just did an episode on that, so you guys can watch the listen to the listen. Vader. So I finished Vader and I watched E3. That was pretty much it. What about you, Devin? Uh, I got around to watching the first episode of Cloak and Dagger. Uh, oh yeah, I watched that too. That shit was good. Uh, yeah, it was really good. That I, shit like, was I good. Enjoyed it. Um, I hope we talk about it. Uh, it's really good so far. Um, I definitely did Vader. Red, Red, Red Vader. Read some anime. Uh, I mean, read some manga, looked at some anime, um, and yeah, I've been working my life away. Just been working. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I read Vader. Um, I watched some E3 shit. I definitely watched Cloak and Dagger. Um, not really nerdy, but entertainment. I started watching Insecure. Uh, for those who watched that, um, I also, I should have been watching that now, but um I read, um, I started reading a little bit of Catwoman because next month we're doing a history of Catwoman episode. So started preparing for that a little bit. Uh, and it's pretty good. Um, I also read uh, Justice League number one, uh, Scott Snyder's reboot. So, Mike, I didn't know if you know this, but Scott Snyder's now writing Justice League. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. And they redid, they did a new number one, and that shit was good. Martian Manhunter's back on the team. They almost so they got like the real squad, and it's basically Scott Steiner's always good in giving commentary of like why these heroes matter. Uh, so he kind of gives this thing about it in the first arc. You kind of see they kind of bring the Legion of Doom back with Luther, uh, which is really good at the end of the book. So uh, I'm expecting big things from that um, as well. Uh, what else did I read? Uh, let me go to my thing just to see what I read. Uh, my books. Okay, uh, I read uh, Man of Steel by Bendis. So he's now writing Superman. He left Marvel. He's in DC now. That was pretty good. Um, I started reading Flash War. Um, X Men Red the Annual was really good. It's Jean Grey's X Men book. And I da- listen. Hey Devin, I had this book called. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Black Lightning and Hong Kong Fui. Yes. So yes. Black, uh, DC and Hanna Barbera have teamed up for a long time. So they had this book called Future Quest that I that I read every issue of. Is so you would love this book, Devin. But basically, all the whole they basically turned all the old Hanna Barbera cartoons that we used to watch into like one shared universe. So like Space Ghosts and Johnny Quests and. All those shows were like in one universe together, interacting with each other. Like they all, I'm here for it. It's like the DC universe, but it was like the Hanna Bear universe, and it was a serious book. It wasn't like a joke, and it was it was really good. And so then they also have these one offs where like the Hanna Bear characters crossed over with DC characters. So they have like the Flintstones meets the Justice League and different things like that. But they have a new one with Black Lightning and Hong Kong Fui working together, and Space Ghosts and Green Lantern Corps. Like, it's so good. I really enjoy those a lot. So, uh, if you want to read something fun, go check those things out. It's really good to read. Uh, we're going to get into a couple stories before we get into our E3 recap. Uh, some breaking news. Uh, well, breaking fake news from Gizmodo. Uh, a new rumor suggests Ben Affleck is out as Batman again. 
I could have swore last week we just read an article that said Ben Affleck wanted to stay on as Batman. I could have swore we read that. I mean, wanting to and, and actually staying on is two different things, though. Is Justice League the last time we'll see Ben Affleck as Batman? The answer is maybe. Yep, this again. The Batman, Ben Affleck, Matt Reeves. Will they? Won't they? Does anybody really know? It feels like every few months there's some kind of rumor about whether or not Reeves, the director working in the new Batman movie, will cast Ben Affleck in the role or go with a new actor. Things started last year when a report said Affleck was on the way out. Later, Affleck made it seem like that wasn't the case. Then on and on it continued with different quotes, reports, rumors, some conflicting, some supportive. And it's all just become a big metal game, muddled game of we don't know. The latest update, if you can call it that, is th- that Deadline wrote the following in a story about Jeff Johns changing roles at DC Entertainment. So, yeah, Jeff Johns actually uh, stepped down as creative director. Did you know that, Mike? I did not. So, there's an opportunity for Toby Emmerich's chairman of Warner Brothers Picture Group to really reshuffle the executive deck on the future side and turn DC into something more formidable than it is right now. Even as James Wan directed Aquaman is Coming and Wonder Woman 2 is in production, with Matt Reeves rebooting Batman for a new standalone franchise, likely with a new actor to play the Cape Crusader after Ben Affleck's stints in Batman v Superman and Justice League. So that's what Deadline wrote. So, Mike, are you more or less convinced that Biff Affleck is going to stay around, and do you want him to stay around? Do you want somebody new? DC News is so volatile. I just kind of, I'm just waiting for like official official releases from DC or the directors because I never know what to believe anymore with DC. I have no idea. I don't know if he's going to be in or not. I, I don't know. But you're a big Batman guy. Do you want Ben Affleck to keep being Batman? I mean, if a younger uh, guy, what? Uh, if a younger guy can do a better job. You know, I'm about it. You know what I mean? I'm not, like, attached to Ben Affleck forever here. You know what I mean? Like He's the worst. He was I mean, noticeably was. older than the rest of the people in Justice League. It was a little weird to see, like, I'm about a new guy if it's done right. You know what I mean? David, what do you want? You want Ben Affleck around? No, never have. I hate him. He's awful. Um, he's Val Kilmer's first and then him as the worst Batman. Speaking of Batman... Uh, the Hollywood Reporter, George Clooney says Batman and Robin was a career wake-up call. <laughs> yo, I saw that, yo. I read that. that was hilarious, yo. Somebody asked him, what movie from your past had the biggest influence on your craft? He said, it's really easy to pick. Batman and Robin. That's not a joke. Up until that moment, I was an actor, only concerned with finding work. After the failure of that film creatively, I understood that I needed to take control of the films I made. <laughs> not just the role... <laughs> Ooh, that's good. That's good. Oh man, that movie was so bad. I bet you Mike likes that movie too, don't you? No. You don't like oh, you actually don't like something with Batman in it? There's a few things I don't like. Also, I don't like that. I heard that new animated movie, Batman Ninja, was awful. I didn't I didn't I, I didn't like it. You watched it? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it was awful. I didn't. They've done. That's the second time they've, they've attempted to make Batman an anime, and I didn't like the first one either. Though I don't really like anime that much in general. Sorry, Devin. Devin, you yeah. like anime and DC movies. Have you seen Batman Ninja? No, I was waiting for the reviews to come out because it came out a while ago. But I was just like, well, I didn't see it anywhere that like that would have really like told me to go watch it. So I just wasn't interested. Um, but the Batman thing about uh, London, I'm kind of interested in. Like him trying to catch Jack the Ripper, I'm kind of interested in that. But yeah, this animation, I was I was hyped about it at first, and then it, it faded fast for me. So um, thanks, Mike, for telling me it was awful. Yeah, I didn't think. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't like it. I haven't okay. watched it, but people I know said it wasn't good. Um, Kenyon Lonsdale, who plays Kid Flash, said that he will not be a regular character on any show next season. So he Damn. won't be on Legends. He won't be a regular character on Legends or The Flash. He says that it won't be the last time you see him, so he will show up. But he's he's doing a new journey in his life, and uh, he's he won't be a regular character on the shows. And I'm a little bit sad because I went back and started watching Legends, and he fits on that show. He fits really well on that show. I think it was too crowded the way they were doing him on The Flash with all the characters Definitely. they were trying to balance. Uh, so he needed to go somewhere and be himself. Uh, and I thought he was fitting in really well in Legends. And, I mean, I'm happy for the dude to go do what he wants to do. Um, 
and he recently came out as bisexual, which is a cool thing. And he's been on this little journey in his life. So I'm happy for him to go do what he wants to do at this point. But I'm going to miss him on uh, Legends of Tomorrow. So that was cool. A um, couple more things before we get to E3. Uh, oh, The Rock is super excited for Hobbs and Shaw. So the one of the they're doing a spinoff. Oh my! They're doing a spinoff on the Fast series. It's called Hobbs and Shaw with The Rock and Jason Statham's character. And he looks. He's talking about the scripts and reading the scripts and the pre-production for the film, and he's super excited for it. So, Mike, you said you sound like you're excited for that too. Yeah, Jason Statham and uh, Dwayne Johnson. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. You call I mean, Dwayne Johnson? Wow! Look at you. I mean, he's well, from a different age. He's a different age. He's the rock to us. Well, that's because he was a wrestler to you. I never saw him wrestle. Well, again, that's why it's hilarious to see you say Dwayne Johnson. By the way, every time I go to the... I've been going to the movies a lot recently, getting back into the swing of things. And every time I see this goddamn skyscraper fucking thing, I cannot wait to watch that movie. God, <laughs> I can't wait to watch that movie. It's going to be so Hold bad. On. It's going to be so Brandon, good. Brandon, what are you more excited for? Skyscraper or Superfly? Oh, Skyscraper. By, by, okay. I feel like Superfly is going to make me mad by how bad it is. <laughs> Skyscraper is going to be like the impossible white man movie that's so ridiculous. that is. Listen, he uses that <laughs> goddamn leg to hang on the edge of a fucking building a thousand feet in the air while it's on fire with his family on that bitch. Like, it's, every, it's ridiculous. I cannot wait to see that shit. I cannot wait. It's going to be so good. Oh. Oh, oh my god, I love so this shit. So you're you're reviewing that, then we're, you're gonna Oh, that? oh yes. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes, nigga. I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, that might be a big review. I might have a bunch of people on for that shit. That's gonna be so good. Oh I'm my god. Sure. Uh that's gonna be so good. Um speaking of movies, uh Ocean Eight's debuts on top of the weekend box office. And I, it I made saw it today, it was good. It made more money in its opening weekend than any of the other Ocean's films. Are you serious? Wow, that's impressive. Who would have thought a movie with women could actually make money? Wow. Look at that. When I was in the movie theater, I was thinking like, yo, this isn't as good as the Ocean movie, but damn, good for it. I thought it was better because it made more sense to me. Cause remember, it did make more, more sense. It, it it was better. It was more... Um, there were some parts that were, weren't were as good. Like the relationship between Ben, I mean, between um, George Clooney and um, Brad Pitt's character was better than the relationship between Sandra Book and Kate Blanche's character, between yeah. Debbie and Lou. But the heist, to me, the heist is way better. was Ooh, better. That was, that was and I like the part where she's going. they're going through like people to get on their team. And uh, Lou, Kate Blanche's like, oh, we got this dude. And Debbie's like, uh, no, nah, nah. I don't want to do. And she's like, what's wrong with the dude? And she's like, I don't want to do. And she's like, look, so much in life, People just ignore us as women. <laughs> so why not use that to our advantage? I'm like, that's exactly right. Because exactly right. nobody would think that these five women would steal this shit. Like, no one would believe that. And they didn't believe it. And if it was real, they wouldn't believe that shit. Like, nobody would think that it's these women doing that shit. So uh, I was like, don't, yes. Don't ruin it for anybody. No spoilers. Oh, well, yeah. we already did a spoiler review, so. I mean, oh, damn. I mean, it's nothing really to spoil. I mean, it is it is an Ocean's movie, so it has the same feel as the other. Ocean. If you like the other Ocean's movies, you'll like this one. Um, but I thought some of the parts just were really cool about it, and I thought Rihanna kind of stole the show, especially in that red dress. Mm. Yeah, 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 definitely. But uh, yeah, it made forty one million dollars this week. Uh, second place was Solo with fifteen million dollars, so it did really well. Um, so that's good. That's really good to see, and that goes to all those people who say. We can't put women as leads in the movies. They won't make as much money as the men. Yeah. It's one great. thing, one thing, one thing that fucked me up. I'm watching this movie and I'm looking like, damn, Sandra Bullock got a Michael Jackson face. I was like, fuck, man. Like, I thought she, she looked like good, Michael. though. No, nah, man. When, when when you, they do some some zoom in, like work, and she gets the close up, she looks like Michael, man. And I'm like, fuck, man. That's going to fuck with me the whole time. I was like, you and that, look. It's in my head. They fuck with me. Like, yeah, plastic surgery isn't good for everybody. I need to pay attention to that. I might go watch that. I want to see that. Uh, Mike, uh, somebody made a six foot tall, hundred thousand piece Lego Batcave. Would you see that? 
No, but I want one. They built the entire Wayne Manor, which was like two feet tall. And then below it is four feet of the Batcave, which includes... That's awesome. Like, they have the T-Rex. They got, like, the car port. They've got, like, like everything. Like, there's a whole fucking shit. So, I know you like Legos, and I know you love Batman. I thought you would be into that. Uh, Waller been working on a tower in Master Peach for a while. First revealed in the subterranean levels on Twitter last year, which included a carousel of the coolest Batmobiles in Dark Knight's history. But evil never sleeps. And this Lego Batman has continued to expand his digs, adding a Gothic-style manor at ground level where he can hang out as Bruce Wayne. Waller incorporated elements from the Batman movies, TV shows, comic books, and even the Lego movies. The video above provides an amazing tour of all the details of Secret Hidden's and the creation, but if you also want to do it yourself a favor and visit Wallace Flickr page for more details, uh, you can see what he did. And it's, fuck, awesome. it's fucking cool as shit. So, so Mike, tell, tell everybody what's the biggest, uh, most pieces of Lego equipment you've ever assembled. Like, what's uh, a, a long time ago, I got the original Millennium Falcon set, which was like, it looked like how many pieces it was. It was, it was a few thousand pieces. Uh, and it was really big. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Look at uh, this. Yes. Look at this shit. That is fucking amazing. <laughs> That's so fucking cool. That is amazing. How fucking cool is that, Mike? He also did Ghostbusters shit, too. I'm trying to find... Oh, let me see Man. If I can find it. Look at this shit, Devin. That is fucking incredible. That is very impressive. Let me go um, I wonder stuff. how many hours and stuff like this is crazy. Wait till you see like, this. Like, is it stress relieving for him? Like, look at what's this. going on? Look at this. This is the shit. Wow. Look at that. Mike, do you see that? Yeah. Look at that. Look at the Batman Batmobiles moving around. I wonder how yeah. long that took. Mike, we should do something like that. Yeah, we should do something like that. To answer Devin's question, it was seven thousand five hundred. So yeah, can't do it. Can't do it. Good, good job, Mike. That's dedication. You, you really want. You really care about the Millennium Falcon. I appreciate that. Also, all right, a couple, couple more things before we get to E three. Um, e three. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, uh, for now, all the Marvel upcoming TV shows will be set before Avengers: Infinity War. So Luke Cage, uh, Cloak and Dagger. And Daredevil three are all set. Daredevil season three are all set before Infinity War. Damn, season wasn't uh, season three come out for Daredevil? It's supposed to come out at the end of the year, supposedly, maybe. Okay. Uh, so there's that. Um, did you see the clip of Luke Cage with Misty Knight and Colleen Wing fucking people up? No, you told me about it last week. I think oh yeah, about Daughters last week. of the Dragon shit look good. Um. Wolverine I mean, is getting a new Brandon, superpower. When the fuck are you gonna watch Punisher? You tell everybody that you still have not seen the Punisher on Netflix. I'll get to it. It's not time sensitive. It's not. You're right, but still. Uh, Wolverine is getting a new superpower. Did you hear about this, Mar- uh, Mike? Yeah, his claws heat up. Yep. Bro. One of his outwardly Bro. physical manifestations of uh, it says uh, THR is reporting a five part series. Will end the story that first began in the 2014 Death of Wolverine and continue the 18 part hunt for the Wolverine storyline. The hero was killed in the 2014 miniseries and recently came back in various Marvel titles this year, which led to the one shot hunt for the Wolverine Dead Ends. Return of Wolverine from Steve McNiven and Charles Sewell promises to feature a different changed Logan. This includes making some adjustments to his claws. One of the outwardly physical manifestations of that is that now, from time to time, his claws, once they're popped, can heat up. Talking about one of these changes, they get really hot. I'm into it. I always like new changes or evolutions of characters, especially mutants, because they oftentimes go through secondary mutations. Look at Beast. Uh, so, yeah, I'm into for that. Um, the first Game of Thrones spinoff is a Golden Age of Heroes prequel. Are you guys into Game of Thrones? Definitely. So that means they're going to have Rob and uh, Rob Raffian and uh, No, 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 Ned? no, no. Way, way before that. Oh, okay, so... Uh, HBO is just giving a pilot order to Jane Goldman's Game of Thrones spinoff, one of five potential follow-up shows 
to the acclaimed series currently in the works. And with it, we have the first story details revealing the show set well before the Westeros we're familiar with. HBO officially revealed today that Goldman series will be set thousands of years before the events of Game of Thrones. In a period wow. where Westeros transitions from an era of fantastical prosperity known as the Age of Heroes into something more akin to the world we know of in the show. Heralded by the arrival of the horrifying White Walkers in the long night they cast over the land. Here's a brief plot description courtesy of Variety. And only, and only one thing is for sure. From the horrifying secrets of Westeros history to the true origin of the White Walkers, the mysteries of the East to the Starks of legend, it's not the story we think we know. So, what do you wow. think about that, Devin? You excited? Yeah, but it just, damn it, that's a lot of TV. That's a lot of hours we're going to have to put in. It's probably going to make us have to go back and watch all the Game of Thrones over again, which I'm here, I'm here for, but God damn it, I, I have a personal life, you know what I mean? And I can't, I can't devote it to this, and I feel like I will be. Mike, do you watch Game you? of Thrones? No. Oh, my God, Mike. What? We never talked about I this. Know, you don't watch I, Game of Thrones? I know. What's to wrong with you? Watch. Because it's, there's just so much now. I, I can't catch up to that. See? See? That's, my that's, that's wife is actually right now watching all of Game of Thrones back from season one, starting today. So if she can do it, Mike, you definitely have the time to do it. You should watch Game of Thrones. Um, all right, one more story before we get to the E3 news. Uh, AT&T won their antitrust fight, and they get to take Bullshit. over Time Warner. Bullshit. So, Man. for some people, I mean, for, and part of that is, like, kind of can create monopolies in the world, which is not a good thing. But another part of that, and the reason why I'm talking about that, is it makes it more likely that the yeah, Disney Fox will, will go through. So, oh. if Fox wins, or whoever wins, if, Fox, if, if Disney if Disney gets the biggest bid, because one of the arguments against that is that Disney's becoming a monopoly, buying up all these properties. Uh, but with this going through, it leads to the fact that this can be these mergers can happen, and these acquisitions can happen, and uh, if that's what you're happy about, which in the nerd side of me is like, yep, I want Marvel to go back to Disney. The, and that's if that's the only way that it can happen, uh, I guess I'll be problematic with this one. So I want Disney to buy Fox. So there's that. I mean, yeah. Other than that being the only thing on the table, it's horrible. Uh, maybe we get faster internet speeds, you know, and they, they actually give it to us, you know, and not restrict us as far as our internet Yeah, speeds. I don't know anything about that. Uh, all right, <laughs> Mike, where do you want to start with E3? All right, so I've been watching all the... Uh, I haven't been able to catch everything from E3, but I watched the Bethesda, uh, the Sony, um, the Ubisoft. Those are some of my three... Well, mostly because I was looking forward to their titles. Um, a lot of new games were announced, too. Um, did you guys watch any of it at all? Have yeah, I've watched some of it. All right, let's start with, let's start with Bethesda. How about that? I, I know right. nothing about Let's start with Bethesda. Bethesda. Mike, what did you think about what? Elder Scrolls Six? Tell us about that. Well, that was. Uh, can I? I so. Let, let me start from the beginning. Can I just? Can I just kind of take this? Mark, Mike, Mark, Mike you ahead. have the floor. You have the floor. Everything that you want to talk about it. So I watched the entire Bethesda reveal for two things. One, I mean, as I've said before, I'm a huge. Fan Talk closer to the mic. Talk closer to the mic. You guys hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. So I watched it because I'm a huge Fallout fan, as you guys know, and I'm a huge Elder Scrolls fan. Um, and I wanted to see. I didn't think, to be honest, no one expected them to announce anything with Elder Scrolls Six uh, this year. I mean, if you look at the previous years, Bethesda takes year, their games are just huge. Like there's, there's really they make games that are very different. Like you know, there's nothing. Bethesda is in a world of its own. Like, you know, some of their games are really, really good. Some of them are not people's favorites, but they're still very different. They're huge, they're massive, and they take years to make. No one can understand. Mike, talk games, closer Mike, to the mic. I'm talking pretty close. You keep going in and out. That might just be my Wi Fi. Sorry. But, uh, what was I saying? Um, they, big games, they, they make huge games, but that they make huge, huge games. games. Do you, hold on, hold on. Do you have headphones in? No. Put put your headphones in. Are they nearby? No. 
Oh my god, that's why you sound like this. All right, go ahead. Um, they take like if you think b- between when Sky like w- when they just announced Elder Scrolls Six and when Skyrim was released. Skyrim was released, I think, when I was in high school. Like it was, it's been a long time, and I just graduated college. So, and now they're they're finally rolling out another. It's de- the Elder Scrolls is probably the most anticipated thing. It's going to be the most anticipated game that we're following today uh, for the next couple of years. Um. But they didn't release. All we got was a teaser trailer. Didn't reveal anything about the game itself. Just, just that it was happening. Um, and a lot of people were giving uh, Bethesda praise because they announced that it, you know they, they're giving people something to look forward to beyond the November releases. Of that being said, the November releases uh, for Bethesda, the biggest, most talked about one was um, Fallout 76. Mike, talk. You're breaking up. Can you hear me? A little better. I think it's just my wife. Uh, well, try speaking a little bit louder. Uh, okay, so... Um, can you hear me better now? Yeah, Fallout 76. What's up? So, Fallout 76 is the first Fallout game that's going to be entirely online. Um, they showed a bunch of gameplay, and it looks really cool. I don't, you guys never played it. I've played Fallout. Did you play Fallout 4? Yeah, that's the one with the little stupid looking dude as the logo. He's always he's like the that's like their that's like the main his name's the Vault. He's like the Vault Boy. Vault yeah, Boy. that's the one where like the the I played this game, I think. That's the one where like it was like a nuke and you come out of like this hiding thing after the nuke. Okay. <laughs> Every Fallout game starts out with you coming out of a vault. Uh, and and walking to the and this is the one where your son you're like looking for your son like yeah yeah I killed. played that one okay mm-hmm. did you ever in that game I don't know if you ever got so far as to build did you ever build anything like build nope. a settlement all right so in Fallout Four one of the biggest things you could do was rebuild the wasteland and you can go to certain areas on the map and build little little settlements and civilizations and people you could recruit people there and people could stay there and you could build up its defenses and it would be like you know a point you could put artillery there and if, Basically, if you got all the settlements on the map and did them really well, you, you had all this coverage and you could, you could do trade routes, and it was really well received by fans. So, in the new, uh, but it, it had its limitations. You could only build a certain, like because of memory of the game and everything, you could only build a certain amount in those areas, and you could only build in certain areas. So, what they did now was in Fallout 76, you can build anywhere on the map, and other people are on the map now too. So, you and your friends can get together. And the map is four times the size of Fallout. So all your friends can get together. Build so this is a co-op game now. It, yeah, but now that a lot of people were annoyed about that, but they did say you could do it single player, but they recommend it with friends just because it'll be more fun. So like, I got a lot of friends that love to play uh, Fallout. Mike, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So like... For example, I have already a bunch of friends who are already pre-ordered the game. We're really excited to, you know, I mean, you can make you can build bases anywhere on the map and steal other people's stuff. You can do quests with your friends. Weapons look great. The enemies look great. It's set in West Virginia. West Virginia has a lot of folklore. Have either of you guys heard of, um, like, Man Bat thing? Mothman. You ever heard of Mothman? No. Mothman yeah. is this, like, alleged uh, creature in West Virginia that, like, flies around out of the sky. It's in Fallout 76. Mike, you're going all the way out. I don't know why. I'm like right in front of my microphone. Are you on the computer? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't think it's the Wi-Fi. Uh, turn the volume up on the mic a little bit. Okay. Um, let me just... I think I got it. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know what the problem is. Okay. Uh, what's the Starfield game? What is that? Starfield is a original. A lot. So Bethesda has been getting crap for a lot of years because like people are like, you guys just released the same games and they profit off of, of the Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Starcraft is a new, totally original title. Um, we don't know much about it yet. I, I watched the like little teaser during their uh, showcase. And it was kind of just like all we know that it's this game in space. It's called, they had a 
they had like someone, uh, the president of, of Nintendo there, because they did a partnership, and you'll be able to play it in Star Fox as a skin. But I don't think it's Star Fox game. Okay. All we know is that it's it's a Bethesda game set in space, which is kind of cool because you have Fallout set in like the, this apocalyptic world. You've got like Elder Scrolls set in like this medieval stuff, and now you have the same company making a space epic. So I don't know what it's gonna be, but I have good faith that it's gonna be fun, and I, I'll definitely play it. All so, right. Then, Bethesda also is, I wanted to tell you this, Brandon. So, Brandon and I are both into VR. Devin, us. Mike, you're breaking but, up again. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, guys, so, about this. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to cut this one short. Mike, Mike, you'll have your time to eat through it out. And no, he can still go. Oh, okay. He can still go. We'll get it good enough. Um, But. What I wanted to say was Brandon and I are into VR. I'm kind of hoping Devin gets in at some point too. But I'm lazy as shit. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't really. Get, I, Brandon wants me to be in these Madden leagues and these uh, 2K leagues, and I have yet to uh, purchase those games. So uh, I am dragging my feet on the well, whole gaming thing. In the world of uh, Bethesda and VR, uh, with the release of the new iPhone 10 and Samsung S9, Bethesda has released a t- full RPG Elder Scrolls game for mobile, but will also be able to play it on the Nintendo Switch and the Oculus Rift with full support and other VR headsets. And wow. it's totally free. Uh, oh, wow. And it's coming out later I played this year. Skyrim the other day, and it was making me wheezy a little bit. All right, so my experience with VR, I, I play Skyrim on VR, and I'm still And by the it. way, Mike Haver, you were just talking in that last sentence. You sounded great. Okay, I'm going to just not touch anything. Uh, except messing with things as I've been talking. But uh, I will say, like, some people have different experiences with VR. For me, I'm, I think I'm just so used to it. I've spent hours in it at a time. I've never had any problems. I play Skyrim VR all the time, and I love it. But do you move in free mode, or do you move in, like, the other mode? No, I teleport. Even I, like, who... Oh, I, like, see, I was moving in free mode. Maybe no, that's why. No, 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 no. You got to teleport. It, you'll get sick because it's just, it's just most, like, I have to teleport. I, I teleport and I do the snap turning, but otherwise the game is fun. I will say there have been times where I'm, like, fighting somebody, and sometimes, like, when I'm using my swords, I'll, like, punch my closet door by accident. Uh, but other than that, I'm totally about the VR games. A lot of people think it's a game, a gimmick, and it's... Yeah, offers a very unique experience. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. Uh, you hear me? Yeah. But I'm excited that they're making a game with most, like, this is going to be more mobile and VR intensive than uh, the, uh, you know, the other games that they had. That, All right. Like, so that's Bethesda. All right. So one of the things I did see was I saw Sony, and I saw that they're making another Last of Us Part 2. Which I know yeah, well, a lot of people are excited about because that game was fucking awesome. It's fantastic. Um, I saw the Spider Man trailer and I saw that it's coming out in September, which I will get that day one. I might pre order that this weekend. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. T- what you say? Tsushima? That game looks fucking cool as shit. Uh, it's basically like this samurai dude that's like fucking shit up, but the graphics are really unique on it. It looks kind of like an anime type game. But it was really cool. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, what else did I see from Sony? Uh, Resident Evil. I'm not really into Resident Evil, but some people are. Some people. They're they're good games though. Definitely good games. Good games. Um, any, did they do? Did they talk about anything new with the PlayStation? I don't think so. Mike. Um. No. Just on. Spider Man was the big focus. Spider Man and The Last of Us were the biggest part of. Sony's thing because they're exclusive to PlayStation. Um, aside from that, I don't think there's nothing new with like the system. I w- there was an article that came out a few weeks ago that's saying PS4 Pro is going to be the last PS4. Yes, yeah, so I did see that. Next one. But there PS4 was is going to be the last what? Say it one more time. It's gonna be, uh, the PS4 Pro is going to be the last PS4. So it looks like they're switching focus to whatever their next console is going to be. Okay. I imagine that's the hell is that? Uh, not me, bro. No, it's that's something real outside of me. It's getting real out of the streets. Oh. Um, did you guys watch Ubisoft? I know Brandon likes Assassin's Creed. I don't know if Devin does. But it's yeah, like- I saw I, Assassin's Creed I Odyssey. 
Yeah, it's got a lot of uh, g- gaming dude bros who are real mad right now, and I'm sure you know why. Oh, listen. Let me tell you. The best thing I saw out of E3 is from Ubisoft. And I think Mike knows what I'm going to say. Devin, you've got to watch this trailer with this movie called, I mean, this game called, I saw the movie because it was like a movie, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Did oh, you, yeah. Listen, I saw that. It looked awesome. Devin, the, pro, the main character one. is this black woman, Jade. Oh, wow. She was in the original one. She's got like a full like afro, like, like big hairstyle, like, and she's fucking awesome. I'm watching this like, I showed my coworker Robin, who's a black woman. She was like, "Oh my god, this looks cool as Robin. shit." Shout and I'm like, Robin. And she's like, "I'm like, yeah, this shit looks so good. I cannot wait for. It. I have no idea when it's coming out, uh, but it looked cool as fuck." And it's called Beyond what? Beyond Good and Evil Two. Beyond Good and Evil Two. That shit looks so fucking cool. Um, Listen, Ubisoft never disappoints either. I mean, they've had some rough releases, but if you look back, I've played every one of Ubisoft's releases that were uh, quote unquote bad, and it's never because the game was bad. It's because when people downloaded the, usually it happens on PC, and it's always because um, like their system wasn't or they had some bugs at release. But the gameplay, the game itself was never bad. Granted, it's on them to make sure that the release is smooth and they don't have any problems because I don't really have those problems with Bethesda. But their games are very good. They're fun. I very much enjoy them. Um, Assassin's Creed has been one of my favorite series. I didn't play the first Beyond Good and Evil. I, I kind of want to now and then play this one before it comes out because it looks really good. Um, and <laughs> they announced their... Uh, I never played this either, but I know this is a big like, popular game amongst uh, people. They announced another Just Dance game, but they announced it by like starting their... Con- Did you see the beginning of the conference, Brandon? No. No. Did this big like musical number and like with a bunch of costumes and like a bunch of people like themed after some of their games and there was all this dancing going on and the main guy that was dancing or girl whoever it was was wearing like the like this bear suit it was really funny that's how, that was the first thing they announced and they didn't really talk about it they were just like yep this is happening um, and uh, they did this big dance musical uh, there was Assassin's Creed Assassin's Creed Odyssey was gonna be a big reveal they always save the biggest ones for the end. Right. Uh, it was the last reveal of Odyssey take place in um, uh, Nintendo offered showed you the new Super Smash Brothers, which yep. has every character that's ever been in the Super Smash Brothers in it. I'm here for it. So and it look it means Super Smash Brothers, but it looks cool as shit. Uh they talked a little bit more about Pokemon, Let's Go, Pikachu and Eve, which I cannot wait Can't to wait. fucking buy. I am getting that on my Switch. Uh, Fortnite is on, on the Nintendo Switch now, which, you know, Fortnite's the most popular game in the world right now, so Nintendo had to get, get their part of that. Um, what else did they talk about? Super Mario Party, they're bringing back out. Uh, I heard that they confirmed that they are going to make a Pokemon open world game, which, you know, I've been wanting for a Ever. long time now. Like since you very, ever since ever you picked your Game Boy very, up, very 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 long time now, so we'll see if they actually do it. Uh, oh, Mike, did you see that game Anthem? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't that shit look cool as shit? Honestly, it does actually. And I'm always I'm usually one to stick to the titles that I know, but this is the first time I watch E3 where I'm like, I kind of want to get these new games. Like these look fun. Or not new? They're new to me. You know what I mean? Like Anthem is something I never like. I can't. I watched E three for the three or four games that I knew were coming down. I want to info on, and I like I've left those sessions like wanted to buy a bunch of games that I'd like. Everything looks good. Oh, this. hold up! Nintendo's doing a Donkey Kong. I missed that. Oh no! It already came out. What? This is hold up. Yeah, I, was say, I don't know what you're talking. There's a Donkey Kong know. game already out for Nintendo Switch. What? Uh, all right, whatever. I didn't know that. I'm missing that. Okay. Um, anything from Xbox? Uh, a lot of people were mad that Xbox didn't put out a VR system yet this year. So no, but not real. Nothing. The consoles themselves had no news to mine off. Okay. It was all just. There's Gears of War five. Uh, that was the big Microsoft one because that's my and Halo. That's the other one I'm. Forgetting. Oh, what a surprise! Gears of War and Halo. Gears of War Five and Halo. Four hateful uh, gaming dudes. Like 
Right. Well, speaking of that, I got an article uh, from TechCrunch, and it says, Gaming lends in, leans into diversity at E3, but not hard. To say the gaming community is not known for its friendliness to women and minority groups is something of an understatement. But we're starting to see developers abandon the usual excuses of tradition, demographics, and most absurd of all, realism, in favor of making gaming more inclusive. Kind of. This has been an ongoing thing for years, of course, but it feels like this year was a little less self-congratulatory and a little more self-motivated. The fun started early, well ahead of E3, with apparently devastatingly uh, diverse front line in Battlefield Five, which takes place during World War II. The predictable objection as to historical accuracy appeared unironic despite the utter lack of historical accuracy in pretty much any of these games. The way the war was fought, the locations, the situations, the weapons, the vehicles have all been liberally massaged to turn the worst thing in history into a fun multiplayer game. Exactly. But it was EA's Chief Creative Officer Patrick Sutherland who made the headlines with a Syrian rip site of an interview on Game, game Sutra citing the historical record of women and people of color in the war. He called out the peanut gallery as both incorrect and irrelevant. That's dope as shit. What's the most unrealistic part of Battlefield Five? It ain't her. These are the people who are, these are people who are uneducated. He said they don't understand that this is a plausible scenario. And listen, this is it. This is a game. <laughs> I love that. Well, honestly, I didn't see as much hate as I thought I was going to see. I saw maybe one or two comments per like game reveal. No one commented on The Last of Us because we all kind of knew that was coming anyway. But like, right. Gears of War probably got Gears of War on Battlefield probably got. The- yeah, that's what it says right here. The E3, then E3 got started. As a pleasant early surprise, Gears of 4 or 5 has you playing a female protagonist in what has been a long, been a mainstay of grizzled space marine mandom, and your companion is a black guy. Of course, you have the new Tomb Raider, a solid yeah. franchise with increasingly strong, well-written female lead. And you know what? I got, like, Gears of War, this is this is going to be a refresher for that series, because it was good, but it got really boring. Yes, after that's the- what I've heard. You know what I mean? Like it was fun. It was a good. It was a cool game. It was new. It was different. I played it. I played the first couple. But By I, the way, I, Batista wants to play the dude from Gears of War, which I think he'd be movie. perfect. Yeah, uh, he he looks just like him, Marcus Phoenix. Yes. Um, in Assassin's Creed, that. hold up, Mike. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Ubisoft went so far as to twist the lore of the series to accommodate the player's choice of character, Alexios or Cassandra, between whom there are no real differences, including romance options and quietly provocative decisions. That's dope as fuck. That's cool, but what, what's making me nervous is not that or anything. But I watched the gameplay demo, and the voice acting sounds really bad. Oh, it does. That well, if, and I, I didn't know if it was just me, so I looked at the comments, and people were like, "Yo, what's up?" With, and I'm really hoping it's because it's still early, like it's not out yet. Right. But someone was like, "Yo, I don't care who you can play as. I'm picking the character with the better voice acting because right now the sounds." Are, uh, um, The Last of Us Part Two has a badass young woman as a protagonist. Defending herself with shock and brutality in a post-apocalyptic hellscape. Uh, Nintendo offered a variety of customization in their new Smash Brothers for Switch with male and female options for all kinds of characters, including Pikachu. That's dope as shit. Uh, Elsewhere, we saw diversity on display in something as simple as having men and women of all races represented as pirate captains, commanders of futuristic forces, medieval knights, uh, and futuristic jet pilots. My favorite outfit was in control, by the way. Yeah, she was dope as shit and beyond good and evil. Uh, yeah, so E3 was... I yeah, mean, so that was, that's good to see. That's like, it's about damn time that this happens because, like, it's not only straight white men who play video games. <laughs> Everyone plays video games. So... Would you see that? I want, like, if you even look at the audience that are at these, comp- like, that are at the sessions, like, it's like half and half. Like, yeah. There's a lot. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of people of color there. There's a lot, there's women there, but for so long, video every time you pick a video game, the default character is white man, white man, white man, white man. Everything you pick. So, uh, and uh, and here's the thing. This is what I don't understand. Black people and women have been playing these games with these white men, and somehow we're just fine playing these games with these white men. There's no problem. We all love these games. We play these games. There's no there's no problem. Now they make games with like black people and women and so maybe some LGBTQ characters, and these dudes get so angry. Like I can't believe you're doing it. I'm like, what are you so angry about? You just played a video game. Well, The Last of Us just did it. They made Ellie a. Uh, she made they made her gay. Or yeah. Maybe. So that was, you know they did that, which is fine. Honestly, if you, I kind of saw that coming in the first one, so I don't know why people are acting surprised about that. I don't know why uh, people are acting surprised either. 
But, but the other thing that I want to just mention is coming out before we before we forget about it before we continue is they did announce a, the long awaited new Halo. Mike, you broke up. Damn, I was doing so well. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, all I want to say is they didn't release really much info about it other than a little teaser showing Master Chief holding his helmet, but it's pretty big for Microsoft. It's been two or three or four years since the last, I think, two, it was like three or four since the last Halo. Halo 5 was disappointing for some people, so a lot of people are hoping that this, this redeems it. Uh, and it's exciting. I think Halo is on. Halo is like Microsoft's Skyrim. All right, you broke up again. All right. Uh, anything else about E3, Mike? Not that I can think of, just that I'm super pumped and everyone should get those pre-orders in. I'm trying to get the Power Armor version of Fallout 76, and it's sold out in like 20 minutes. I can't get one right now. Yeah, I'm getting the pre- Well, I download everything now, so I'm getting my Spider-Man shit this weekend, which I can't wait. Uh, and I think they're going to have a Miles costume. Oh, we didn't talk about that. Uh, did you guys both see the full trailer of the Miles movie? No. Yeah. Devin, you haven't seen it? Not at all. Oh, the Miles. You saw it, Mike? It came out last week? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that shit good? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been pumped for this movie for a lot of reasons. Mainly, like, the the this is so different. And especially, like, the artwork and everything. It looks so cool. Yeah, I can't wait for I, that shit. Miles about to be on my TV screen. And they had Spider-Gwen. I was like, oh, yes. That's She's dope. getting a uh, a new show, I think. Spider-Gwen's getting a show? I'm pretty sure. she's Something big is happening to her. Let me see. She's very popular. She's very, very popular. Because the Gwenpool shit is definitely, I like that shit. Well, Gwenpool's yeah, a different getting, character. She's getting a TV show. She's getting an animated TV show, I think. Yeah, Spider Gwen is coming to TV for the first time. Uh, um, let's see, I'm trying to find it real quick here. Uh, we're just under a year away from the third version. There's still so many. Season four. Wait. Oh, the Ultimate Spider Man season. Four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gonna be the Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah, I heard about that. No, no, no. Oh yeah, she's coming to TV. But I thought she was getting her own show. No, I think she's gonna be on the Ultimate Spider Man. I heard about that. I heard about that. So is she in the Spider Verse? You're gonna be in New York. What, what, what the fuck's going on? Oh, oh yeah, they're doing the Return to the Spider Verse arc. Okay, because I was about to say like August 27th. August 27th. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. All right, cool. All right, anything else you guys got this week? Nope. Nah, man. Stuff. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Remember, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, anywhere you get your podcast app, Spotify. Please do a five star review. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.